Okay, so picking up from where we left off last time, uh, we have our game that if we start it, it still will have matches, we'll fix that soon enough, but if I swap two pieces to make a match, like I would here, uh, then any pieces that are matched are going to gray out, and we're going to use that to kind of destroy them, and then collapse the columns, and then bring in new pieces, but for now, we're just kind of making sure that we have it noted that we have a match, and we're doing that right now by changing the alpha value so that the pieces look a little gray. Now the next thing we need to do is, if you'll notice, if I switch two pieces that don't make a match, they don't come back, which is what they should do. Otherwise people would be able to just move pieces around to wherever they want to, to get as big a matches as they possibly could. So uh, today we're going to use this system that we just created, where we're turning these pieces kind of grayed out, to detect whether or not two pieces made a match, and if they didn't make a match, move them back. So let's take a look at our code here. Uh, so. We're in Game Maker here. I'm looking at my dot object. And what I want to do first is I want to create a couple of variables. So if we're moving two things, um, looks like I already have these in here. I was messing around with this earlier. Um, if we're moving uh, these two pieces around, we want to keep track not only of where they currently are, their current column and row, but where they previously were, their previous column and their previous row. So in the create event here, create, I just added two extra variables. These have to come after column and row because we're setting them to be equal to column and equal to row. Um, so if you put these before the column and row, you're going to get an error when you run. So after column and row, doesn't matter where, I'm just going to add these previous column equals column and previous row equals row. And that's just to keep track of where the piece starts out. Now the next thing I'm going to do oh, is also in my create event. And I think I already have this here. Yep is I'm going to create a reference to the dot that we're switching with. So it doesn't matter where this goes. Uh, it can go anywhere. I'm just kind of creating an empty variable. So somewhere in the create event, you need to add this other dot. Um, and then I think it's easy just default to set it equal to no one to start, meaning no one is essentially game maker's version of null, meaning it's nothing. There is no nothing inside this container. Uh, OK, so now we're going to go to our global left released. And again, I think I made these changes off camera, sorry. Um, all of these places where I used var other dot, um, you need to delete the, the var, because we're going to be using this kind of generalized other dot. So every place that you see var in front, which would be here for the right swipe, here for the up swipe, here for the left swipe, and here for the down swipe, you're going to delete that var keyword in front so that it just says other dot. Um, OK, cool. And now also, in this same event, global left released, I want you to go down to where it says other dot and just comment this out for now. You can delete it because we're probably certain not going to use it again, but for our purposes we might as well comment it just in case we want to use it again. That'll save us a little bit of typing. And programmers are nothing if not lazy. So, okay, cool. Now, uh, what we want to do is when we're recording what our other dot is and uh, where the other dot is, and moving that other dot and ourselves, we want to make sure that we're also going to uh, change the previous column and previous row of that other dot. So, and then also do it for ourselves. We shouldn't need to do this since we're already setting that at the create event. This is just kind of a making sure, a double checking. So, this is very important. This needs to go before we set the column or row of the other dot or of our dot. Um, before we do that, we need to set their previous column and previous row. So I'm going to do other dot, dot previous column is equal to other dot, dot column. I'm going to do something similar for the row. So I'm going to just copy this, paste it. So I'm going to do previous row is equal to other dot, dot row. Then I'm also going to do the same thing for our dot. I'm going to say previous column is equal to column and previous row is equal to row. Now, like I said, it's important that these come before you set the column uh, in either the other dot or our dot. I'm going to copy these four lines here and I'm just going to input them in everywhere else I'm doing movement. So, and I'm doing both column and row. I 
really only need to do either the column or the row, depending on which one I'm moving. But again, I'm just kind of doubling down, just making sure everything's there. Uh, okay, so the next thing I want to do, at the end of my left release method, but still inside this great big uh, parentheses, is I want to add uh, alarm1 equal to, we'll say, 10. This is 10 frames. Uh, my room right now is running at 30 frames per second. So if I set this to 10, uh, that's uh, roughly a third of a second. We might need to adjust this later. Uh, we might need to make something a bit more generous. So if I just kind of go over here, the next thing I'm going to do is actually make that alarm one event. So I'm going to go to add event. I'm going to choose alarm, alarm one. And let's change our description here. So my description for this is going to be uh, move pieces back if necessary. All right, so what I want to do first is I want to check to make sure that other dot is in the room still. And if it's not, that means it matched and destroyed already, so we don't need to do anything. So I'm going to say if instance underscore exists and the object I'm looking for is other dot, then what I want to do is check to see whether or not our current dot is grayed out and the other dot, or the other dot is grayed out, not and. And if neither of them is grayed out, then we'll move them back. So if uh, our current dot, so id dot image underscore alpha is greater than 0 0.2, which is what we set it at when we grayed it out, and other dot dot image underscore alpha is greater than 0.2, that means that neither our dot or the other dot have made a match then we're just going to move them back. So we're going to say um, column equals previous column, row equals previous row, other dot dot column equals other dot dot previous column, and other dot dot row equals other dot dot previous row. Um, okay, cool. So I'm going to save this and let's hit play. And check to see if this works. If it doesn't, we can fix it. It's one of the things about programming is you make like a whole bunch of mistakes so you learn how to fix stuff. Cool. So those two don't make a match, so they switched. These two don't make a match, they switched. Uh, let's find three that do make a match. So if I move this white one down, it grays up. Yellow one down, grays out. These two don't make a match. These two don't make a match. I'm just checking all these edge cases here to make sure nothing funky happens when I do something at the edges, either top or bottom. Um, all right, cool. So uh, we've created a system to detect matches. We've created a system to move pieces back if no match is made. Uh, next, we're going to take a look at a system to you know, destroy the matches and then collapse the columns. After that, we will add new pieces. And then we'll have the basic logic down. We can start looking at power-ups and boosters and fun stuff like that, but that's a little ways down the road. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask down in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.